Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and every so often there is a mouse release that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and that is what we are going to be covering in this video, the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro. And not only that, but the new Mouse Dock Pro, which is sold separately from the Basilisk V3 Pro, and it is only compatible with the Basilisk V3 Pro at the moment. Um, so I'll quickly talk about the Mouse Dock first, I guess. As you can see, it comes with integrated 4K Hertz polling rate, so it's basically doubles up as the hyper pulling dongle along with a magnetic charging dock i did somehow manage to uh, lose the puck so i don't i don't get to experience this charging but i would presume if i had the uh, puck that this mouse would be charging when it goes on the dock putting that besides the point the mouse dock pro is going to be 70 dollars and the basilisk v3 pro is 160 dollars so this entire setup is $230, which is definitely a lot for a mouse setup. The mouse dock is obviously an optional purchase, and in my opinion, it really doesn't add a lot of value, um, because here we out, 4K Hertz polling rate on a mouse like the Death Adder V3 Pro, the Viper V2 Pro, it makes sense. These are FPS-oriented mice, um, but a 115 gram Basilisk V3 Pro with a fuck ton of RGB, like, I don't really need a higher polling rate with that, um, personally, at least. And with the amount of RGB, it just drains the battery even more on higher polling rates than a thousand. So it's definitely something worth considering. Like, is it really worth $70 to be able to put your mouse down like that instead of just plug in a USB-C cable? Like, come on. I know, like, first world problems, but, like, that is really up there. Like, oh man, this is just so much easier than fucking taking the cable out and plugging it in. Oh god, being tasked with doing this once every so often? Count me out, dude. And yeah, I do appreciate Razer sending out both of these for review, but it's hard for me to recommend the dock, not only when it is not compatible with any of the other pro Razer mice, um, but also one of the selling points, the 4K polling rate on a heavy mouse with this much RGB. I just don't think that's really the target market for higher polling rates. But on the other hand, it does make sense that Razer will refresh all of their lineups with their new tech. So I'm not totally like hating on this mouse. I understand there is a market for it, that average like G502 user. There's so much scroll wheel functionality. Let's talk about that now. Um, there's side clicking both ways. That's innovative stuff. There is of course a free scrolling mode like the G502. You just press the button, then the wheel scrolls scrolls freely but there is the craziest setting smart reel which is just a mix of both so like you're you can normally be scrolling getting your defined steps but then if you flick it does the infinite scroll and honestly this is like it's just really i don't know como se dice finicky when like i'll just normally be scrolling up and down expecting the defined steps and then it'll just go into free spin mode i gave it a try in game i knew it wouldn't be good but i just wanted to see like if it was fucked and it kind of is like I feel like it just takes too little pressure to get the mouse into free spin mode. Um, and then once it's in free spin mode, you gotta like let go of the wheel for it to snap back. So so I definitely didn't find the smart reel mode to be too smart. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, once I turned it off, I was perfectly fine using the scroll wheel. But besides the scroll wheel, what does this mouse have to offer? Well, it's really both everything and nothing at all. We're getting really philosophical in the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro review. Um, this mouse has just a ton of features. I feel like every feature that Razer like, can fit in a mouse, they've put on it. They've got extra buttons. They've got the old side grips that they just like implemented into the shell. Obviously, lots of RGB. There's a Bluetooth mode. There is just a whole lot going on with this mouse. But ultimately, at the end of the day, all things considered, it's 115 grams, and it just does not feel up to par with some of their other releases this year for FPS. Obviously, there are people who play other games out there, and if this looks like a great MOBA mouse, I couldn't even name a MOBA game, but if that looks like a good MOBA mouse to you, go for it, by all means. But for people who are playing stuff like Valorant, Apex, Fortnite, um, this is just not really going to be a recommendation. But there are still some features that I can cover. Um, the shape, obviously, it it is not changed at all so it's the standard basilisk very similar um, to the g502 i feel like that's what this best compares to the clicks are using the v3 opticals and they're a like different implementation than on the viper and the death adder they have a very sharp feeling i think it's because the travel distance is very low um, really no problems with wobble pre or post travel their tension very sharply like i mentioned 
So honestly, a really solid implementation of the opticals with one of the most like natural feeling tactile responses, no signs of any like mushiness or just dullness at all. And besides that, I really don't have a lot to say. Like I've been mentioning, the weight of this mouse is kind of just what kills it for me. I feel like at least for me personally, I've tried enough like G502 style mice in this weight range to just know that it's not something that I'm going to really consider maining. Um, if you are somebody who just wants a mouse that has those extra buttons don't care about weight i feel like you would just i don't even know the type of user that this mouse is for i can't picture them in my mind but if you're out there this isn't gonna fall short quality wise it feels like a solid product like the build on it is absolutely solid the buttons are well tensioned like i said even this a sniper button the side buttons are fine scroll wheel has all of those features and besides smart reel i think they're implemented really well but yeah this is just not a mouse at 160 dollars that i am really a fan of there is the wired basilisk v3 for $60 and that does have a slightly worse sensor the v2 opticals but it's just a lot cheaper and it has the uh, same feature set basically besides wireless and the mouse dock at $70 if it was compatible with the other mice I understand that is kind of counterintuitive with these like shaving off every gram and then expecting it to have wireless charging functionality but the fact that this only works with the basilisk um, at the moment that's just I don't feel like it's worth the money especially when you're basically paying money for horrible battery life which is in turn going to make you use the wireless charging more it actually makes sense uh, but yeah the 4k hertz pulling or even 2k hertz pulling with the amount of rgb this mouse has you're going to be getting one days two days max with battery life so if you do just have the normal hyper pulling dongle you can obviously pair the basilisk up with that but again i don't really know why you would want to do that but yeah that is basically going to be all for my review i'm not going to really go over too many more of the features but yeah the side grips they don't feel all too great in my opinion and combining that with the weight and the just very dense feeling this mouse has i can't recommend it for fps games if you play other games or if you think you'll like this mouse for fps um it's not going to be bad presuming you do not care at all about using a brick which just looking at the mice on my desk i don't think there's a single one that weighs over 70 grams so obviously i am accustomed to these lighter mice that razor has been putting out some of the best mice on the market um so this one just feels kind of odd kind of out of place and I just realized that this is the first Razer mouse to not receive the seal of approval since the original Viper Ultimate. They had three-peated with the Orochi, then the Viper V2 Pro, then the Death Adder V3 Pro. That reminds me of the 1990 to 1993 Chicago Bulls, who three-peated, but then after, you know, the whole Jordan gambling controversy, he did not play in 1994. And the Basilisk V3 Pro reminds me of the Chicago Bulls without Jordan. So I don't know what this mouse is missing, but it's just they don't have that Jordan factor to it. 1994, by the way, the Knicks, my New York Knicks, made the finals that year, beating the Chicago Chicago Bulls in the conference finals. Just saying. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video is at eight minutes now. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy, especially if you like that basketball reference. But yeah, peace. No seal of approval.